Hey guys, welcome to the Ansible AWX series. In this part 2 video, we'll learn the process of installing AWX on K3 Kubernetes platform. And if you are watching this channel first time, be sure to subscribe and press the like button that will allow this type of videos to reach to more number of people. With that, let's start today's video. Alright, so what we have here is the latest release of Ubuntu desktop version which is 23.04 so first thing we are going to do here is to create a project directory where we will keep all our configuration file for this installations then we are going to update the packages on our machine to the latest so I am going to run sudo apt update along with sudo apt upgrade under the password it is always a good practice to update and upgrade before starting any fresh installations while that installation is running let's head over to the k3 official documentation and understand how we can install k3s on our open door machines so here i'm on the k3s.io which is an official page then go to the doc section of it which will open up a new page then you'll find a quick starter guide over here there is a script we can run which include all the utilities we have required for the kubernetes like kubectl so it will download from the k3 website as mentioned over here then we are ready to go with kubernetes setup and the, all the configuration the kube configuration will be at etc slash ranchster k3.yml and we'll see how to do all those things in a while so i'm going to copy the installation script here and go back to the terminal so we have the installation completed now let's go ahead and install k3 so for this i need to install curl command so sudo apt install curl so we have the curl installed now let's run the command again it is downloading the scripts from the github.com slash k3.io so over here we can see the instance of k3s we can see the creating environments and all those things next let's verify if the k3 has been installed successfully so let's use kubectl command kubectl get nodes so we are enabled to read uh, the file and this is because of permission denied okay so what we can do here is we basically we need to change the ownership of this file so what you can do is let's say slash it p3 slash here you can see only root and the group root can have a privilege to run this command what we can do is change of ownership then i'll put my login then i will put my group name slash etc slash rancher k3s k3s.yml okay now check again this command now i have the privilege to run the kubectl command so now run the kubectl get nodes I have one control plane node ready running from five minutes so let's also check if we have any ports running so we don't have any resource running on the default namespace all right so we have the k3 installed and set up now we'll go ahead and understand how we can install AWX on Kubernetes platform. So for that, let's head over to AWX page, which is a Git documentation. So under this GitHub documentation, we'll see a whole lot of details. And first it explains about what AWX provides. It provides a web-based user interface with REST API capabilities and on top of uh, Ansible task engine. Then click on the install guide which will open up the page related to the installation documentations 
So what we can see here is that we something called AWX operator, which is specifically designed to facilitate the deployment and the management of AWX within the Kubernetes. So starting version 18.0, AWX operator is a preferred way of installing AWX. So you can click on the AWX operator documentations that will take us to the installation of AWX operators. Here you can see the basic installation step. Once you have the running Kubernetes clusters, you can deploy AWS operator on your cluster using the customize, which is a built-in function with kubectl. So what we need to do here is that we need to create a customization.yaml file and put all the content what we can see here. So let's go ahead and run this one. So we'll have a customization.yaml file created first. So I'll have gym customization.yml. So one important point to note here is that you can use this content, but you need to add the tag informations. And the tag information is available on the operator release. So here you can see the tags. Probably will go with some previous version, so I'll pick 2.5.2. .2. So let's copy this configuration file, put it here on the Vim file just created, and file name is 2.5.2. .2. Also, we need to update over here as well. It's 2.5.2. Right, so that's pretty much need to do in terms of updating customization dot viable file. Next, we need to run this. We need to install the manifest, right? So, which is kubectl apply hyphen k. So it will go ahead and download. So we have the namespace AWX is created so we are done that step now so after a few seconds after a bit you should be seeing the AWX operator running so you can see the kubectl pod hyphen n then give the namespace so we have the AWX operator currently running that's great so if you don't want to check the namespace every time then you can change the kubectl configuration command i think this is useful let's change it let's change the default namespace to the awx i think i should use pseudo privileges to get this one so now we don't need to put awx to check the pod informations so we have the default pod which is aws operator and which is currently running all right so that's pretty much on the customization file now we need to create a file named aws.demo aws hyphen demo dot yml on the same folder with the suggested content below so what we need to do here is we need to create one more file called awxdemo.yml let's go back to shell and we should be putting this content over there once it is done we need to make sure that the one we just created where the black siphon demo is updated on the manifest file under the resource sections so what we need to do here is that we need to hyphen awx dot yml all right so let's go back to the shell again open the vi editor for customization dot yml under the cust under the resources add 
this one make sure that your indentation is correct and save the file and then again we need to run this one but now it's only run this part not the whole one all right so congrats we have pretty much done with the installation part it takes few minutes for download and deploy those resources and you can use kubectl get ports command to check the status so it took nearly 5 to 10 minutes for me to get the system up and ready look like the postgres and the web applications are up and the status shows running next we need to understand how to check the application access from the browsers there is something called nat we need to get nat at port information in order to access the application for that we need to run the svc command mentioned on the git page so here you can see the cluster ip and the node port number which is translated from 80 to 31442 that means our application would be accessible on this port next we need to find out the k3 node ip which is actually the vm ip where we have the linux os running for that use kubectl get node hyphen o space wide for display the additional information in wider output format so here you can see the container d is k3 oneness and the node ip at the internal ip sections so let's try to log into the ansible environment and the default username is admin password would be the string that we can get from the terminal by running this particular kubectl command so let's paste the string we got from the terminal and hit the login now we are going to get created with awx homepage and this is a great starting point to use awx so that's it for today's video i hope you enjoyed and hope you learned something if so let me know by hitting the like button and leave the comments in the comment sections down in the below other than that thank you for watching and see you next time bye